My name is uh, Tor Bjarne. I am uh, the OAM on uh, one of the shifts uh, here on uh, Rangrid. So I want to welcome you on board Rangrid. Uh, we are stationary here on Gina Krog oil field. And our uh, main purpose uh, here is to uh, receive and export the oil uh, which is produced on uh, Gina Krog uh, platform. So this is uh, actually the STL uh, boy and uh, locking uh, system. So the, the STL boy, which is being pulled into the hull, it's a huge cone uh, uh, cylindrical uh, boy, which is locked by uh, 10 uh, hydraulic locking boys and kept in position uh, into the hull. The boy is again uh, anchored into uh, in position by 12 anchors. So actually, uh, everything we uh, we see see from here is the, is a part of the buoy, which is stationary, and we are turning around uh, the inner circle of uh, this. Uh, and of course, uh, in the middle here, in the center, uh, that's the, the the riser, which is coming up from the seabed, seabed, the flexible riser connected to the SDL buoy, where the oil is coming in and coming into. Uh, to us to distribute into the cargo system. Our operation here on uh, Gina Krog is uh, we are uh, receiving uh, the cargo or the oil from Gina Krog. So we load the cargo on board and uh, the normal parcels uh, here on the field before we have a uh, full cargo to offload is, uh, is 600,000 barrels. And uh, when the shuttle tanker is coming, uh, she is connecting astern of us using uh, the special offloading uh, station where we have a horse uh, on a horse reel. So basically what we are doing, we are shooting the line over to uh, the shuttle tanker and they are starting to pull in the mooring horse first and then uh, the horse afterwards and connecting in the bow. And then we have uh, cargo pumps, which is uh, pumping the cargo from Rangrid through the fiscal metering stations, through the horse and into uh, the shuttle tanker. Uh, shuttle tanker's bow and uh, normally such an operation takes around uh, 16 hours. Uh, Rangrid, uh, there was very good focus in the project when it comes to uh, how to build an eff effective FSO. Uh, and I think also, uh, as we know, Altera Infrastructure, they know very well the operation on both sides. And we have competence both on Rangrid and on the shuttle tanker, which, need, which knows what we need to have a quick, efficient and safe joint venture on an oil field. And of course also the competence in the various uh, support groups in the office uh, has basically designed shuttle tankers and the bow loading and uh, stern discharge equipment. So Ranger is maybe uh, the most effective uh, FSO in North Sea when it comes to uh, discharge time and also connecting, disconnecting time. Because what we want basically is the quickest and safest turnaround on the vessel. You want to have to minimize the time you need a shuttle tanker behind you as much as possible. The unit we are seeing uh, just after us here <coughs> is the pigging uh, pig receiver. It is to to make sure that the export line from uh, Gina Krog, including our risers, will not be clogged with uh, with any sediments or. Uh, the briefs uh, which normally can build up in uh, sea bottom pipelines. So this is the central control room. This is the heart of the vessel where we are running uh, the entire operation. All the safety system, all the power management and all the utility systems are uh, controlled from, uh, from this room. And of course it is the first response of any uh, emergency in action uh, in case anything should happen. So we have various systems, all the control system, core heave, core safe, which is controlling the power management and the utility system, the cargo uh, system. We have the communication uh, for helicopters, PRGA, position monitoring, uh, gas, walk boiler, metering station, weather, helicopter uh, monitoring system, position mooring system uh, for making sure that we are uh, well uh, anchored at the buoy and also for heading control loading computer which gives us stability and stress, uh, radar for surveillance in case of anything on collision course and in addition we use the room for emergency preparedness. 
Uh, cup panel is uh, very critical. That will show if we are healthy or have anything inhibited or override. And we can also release all the water mist, all the dilutions, and all the shutdown function ESD 1, 2, and 0 from uh, this panel. In addition to the daily work planning meeting in the evening and the morning, in case we have something uh, unplanned happening during the day, we will be uh, sitting down, we will evaluate the risk and the barriers and things we, so we make sure that we have everything in place to be able to carry out this job safely and also, uh, of course, sign the necessary paperwork uh, with the correct people. Well, we are on, uh, on A deck, that's the material handling deck. And of course, uh, as you can see, tidiness and cleanliness is of uh, utmost important that we don't have anything unsecured and and blocking any safety walkways. So the log logistic here on board is, uh, is quite brilliant, uh, made uh, for us to be able to, to use an electric truck and uh, able to transport uh, all the goods from the containers directly uh, from the landing deck into the elevator, down to material handling space in the engine room, provision directly into the freezers. And also we have the possibility to transfer goods all the way from uh, the landing deck all the way forward by means of this uh, electrical truck. So that makes the operation much more easier and efficient and also much more safe than it would have been done if you need to lift bike reins and blind lifts and uh, all the requirements which uh, comes into force when you're using cranes for material handling offshore. So now we have entered the uh, oily water separator uh, skid. Normally the, the, the cargo from Ginakog or the crude oil uh, contains uh, two and a half, uh, three percentage of water when we are uh, getting the cargo on board. So one of our uh, job is to uh, take out the remaining uh, produced water from the cargo by settling it and uh, storing it and heating it up in the closed drain tank. And then we are using the centrifuges or the separator skids to discharge it uh, safely overboard, well within the maximum limit, which uh, on the Norwegian shelf now is 30 ppm. But our uh, operation of the oil water separators, we are doing it in a way that we normally ends up with from one to four or five ppm only uh, when we discharge produced water overboard. So uh, normally after we have done this process and uh, the cargoes uh, we are discharging should contain less than uh, 0.5 percentage of water. But though normally we are laying on 0.2, 0.3, which uh, means we have very good quality cargo to uh, give to the refineries uh, ashore. So this is the, uh, the fiscal uh, metering skid. This is where we actually are measuring the quantity of oil we are exporting to the shuttle tankers. It's so accurate, it's ultrasonic uh, measurements with a calibration loop, which we are running every time during the charge also to verify that uh, the, the metering streams are correct at any given time. So the uh, official figures, uh, which will end up uh, eventually in the bill of lading, is the figures which we are taking out on the computer in the control room which has been running through uh, the four streams we have uh, on the metering station here. In addition, uh, on the other side here, we have a sampling cabinet, uh, which is taking uh, spot samples uh, continuously uh, dropped from the cargo uh, from we start uh, the discharge operation until we have completed the uh, discharge operation. And the sample bottle then will be analyzed uh, in, the, in our laboratory and uh, that will determine the APA of the cargo, the soil contents, the uh, sediments, and all the other things which require to be in the, in the cargo uh, origin and uh, quality certificate, which also ends up as a part of the bill of lading. So this is the, the main uh, wok boiler, which uh, is designed uh, actually together as a prototype together with vendor back in the days in the project, a very innovative development. In a simplified way, we are able to take the gas directly from the, from the cargo tank, the vapor, and use it uh, for energy uh, purposes uh, by burning it in this huge uh, boiler. 
Uh, so this boiler has two, uh, two, two burners uh, and we are using uh, one or two of them uh, according to how much gas there is present in the cargo. So as we uh, speak now, we are just finished an offload and uh, the, the liquid in the cargo tanks are quite low. The, the allergies, so uh, one, uh, one burner is enough to cover the whole consumption due to less heating uh, requirements. So this is the, the ship's uh, or the installation uh, hospital. Uh, the SSL, the stability section lead, he is the medic on board, a normal operation. Uh, but of course, uh, we also have a very nice system where we have direct contact 24-7 if you wish. We are video linked to uh, Haukland uh, Hospital, where there is always a duty uh, doctor, which uh, is on call 24-7. Uh, so in case we have any, uh, God forbid, any uh, incidents or we have people which is not feeling well and we are a little bit uncertain how to treat them, then it's just to dial up uh, the number and uh, we have the doctor here on the screen uh, within uh, seconds. In addition, here offshore uh, on Norwegian shelf, of course, uh, there is a lot of oil rigs and uh, Johan Sverdrup, the big felt center, is uh, only 15-20 uh, minutes flight time away where they have a SAR helicopter available with uh, doctors uh, and uh, nurses and a fully equipped hospital almost. So now we are uh, entering the local operating room, uh, that's the old uh, engine control room when it was a ship before. And here the, uh, the engine room operators, they are operating uh, all the machinery and utility systems uh, at any given time. Uh, a lot of the parameters and things can also be uh, run from the CCR. So, uh, so this is the monitoring the, the boilers, all the machinery and uh, all the utility system to, to keep the ship uh, with power and also uh, the hotel fa facilities and, uh, and everything we need to, uh, to be in normal operating condition. The people on board Angle is fantastic. We are a very good team on board. We are filling each other in. What I don't know, uh, definitely somebody else will assist. But you know, we, we speak openly. Uh, one of my biggest things is that uh, I want to have such an open atmosphere as possible uh, that people can come and talk to me anytime. Uh, the welfare on board, of course, people are working 12 hours on, 12 hours off, but it is very important that you have the option of a gym. You can go and do exercise before watch or after watch. We have a cinema which we are using uh, quite regularly. Uh, on my shift, we normally use it for uh, watching football. Uh, some of the other shifts, they like to watch a movie on Saturday, Sunday. And means that we are getting together and uh, doing something else than just talking job when we are actually off work. The accommodation in general is uh, very nice on Rangrid. It was totally renovated during the conversion. So stairways and things on board is, uh, is according to, to rules and regulations. I will describe Altera maybe as uh, the best company in the world when it comes to, uh, when it comes to people management. And I think uh, one of the reasons is that uh, people in Altera care, care for each other. Uh, they walk the talk, office care for the seafarers, and, and, and we, have, we have a close cooperation and we are, we are one team, even if we are working outside here in uh, offshore in the, in the sharp end or in the front line. We are one team with the people working and we have the same vision, we have the same goal. It goes from the president, the CAO, down to, to the deck cadet on board a vessel. So I think we have a, a good safety culture uh, where people actually walk safety instead of not talking safety. And I think that is the key also that we have been able uh, over the last few years to, to build up very good safety records. So on board Rangrid also, which we have a lot to focus on and we talk and we plan and we talking barriers, barriers, barriers always to make sure that people know that the job they will be doing is safe. And uh, we want to have the, the open culture that people will stop each other if they see something. They care for colleagues. Uh, we treat each other with respect always. 
everybody is different. We need to think a little bit how we talk to each other and how we behave. So I think to treat people with respect, be one team, work together, I think that is something which is binding people employed by, uh, by, by Altera actually a little bit together.